Hey everyone, it's Fox from ModelMaking.Guru here, uh, back with part, uh, I think, three of our build of the Ravel 172nd uh, 7C U-Boat, uh, which is meant to be Das Boat, U96 from Das Boat. Uh, as you can see, we made quite some progress. Um, I've been very limited on time the last few weeks just because of various personal matters and family visits and things like that, so I'm struggling a bit for time, So, but luckily we're on the weathering now, so uh, it's all kind of... Uh, speedy stuff. Uh, I've got quite a long way. I've done major chunk of the weathering now. I've added um, shading, I've added the rust and some chipping and weathering. Um, all that's left to do on the weathering side now is maybe a dry brush of a light colour just to bring out the highlighted details like the rivets and so on and the edges. Um, adding all the little shiny metal touches once the last coat of matte varnish is on. Stick the sail on and then the terrifying, terrifying part of actually putting the rigging on it with Easy Line, which I won't be filming, much as I'd love to, because this is a very, very delicate model, and I'm going to be sweating bricks when I'm doing it, uh, because it's not an easy process. So I won't film that bit. I'll probably do a separate tutorial at some point on how to use Easy Line um, on some scrappy stuff, just so I can show you. Um, but yeah, it's coming on nicely. Uh, I'll go to a different camera now, just to give you a bit of a guided tour. Warning, wobbly pictures ahead. Right, now I never normally film this way, so apologies for wobblings and focusings. Uh, as you can see, we've got pretty far on the weathering now. Uh, what have we done so far? So obviously we've done the paint job, do German grey on the bottom and sky grey on the upper hull for the grey colour. Uh, we have added, let's go around the front, you can see this puppy is heavily weathered. Uh, actually not as bold as it looks on film. The rust isn't quite that bright. Uh, we have added some... We did a gunk wash, which is where you cover the whole thing in oil paint and rub it all off. Gunk wash of MiG-502 Abtai Lung Starship Filth, because of course I did. You know I did. It's the way I work. Uh, that shadowed everything quite nicely. Then we've done some streaking with Starship Filth again, uh, 502 Abtai Lung German Grey Highlight for the lighter streaks and uh, some 502 Abtai Lung Engine Grease for the darker streaks on the German Grey. I don't know if you can really see them. They didn't really come out, the Starship Filth didn't really come out because it's a similar colour so I had to use the Engine Grease for that. Um, what else have we done? Going up onto the deck. Whee. Um Can't remember how far I was with the deck in the last one. So basically that was painted all with Tamiya Deck Tan acrylic paint. Um, painted once it was installed and painted by hand. Then it was... Uh, how did I do this now? I've got to remember now. It was... Gunk washed slash dry brushed. A bit of each. With... Uh, Starship Filth. Uh, then a pin wash was done with Tamiya Flat Black and what I basically did um, was go into every single one of these holes and panel lines with a very fine brush and some thin down Tamiya Flat Black just using Tamiya Thinner and one by one fill them with the thin flat black. It was very tedious and took me about two hours. Uh, that was left to dry. Um, once all that was done uh, it was, oh, before I did that, uh, I gloss varnished using Pledge Multi-Surface Wax to protect the paint from the oils and to protect the oil paints from the acrylic wash. Uh, then, what have I done after that? Not a lot, actually. It's given a little bit of rust on some of the panels. Um, once all the all that was done, uh, what did I do? I don't have to remember now. I've only done it like the, over the last few days. Uh, once the streaking was done, uh, I then set to with some 502 Abtel on light rust and just basically dry brushed it um, onto the surface. Again, it looks a bit extreme on here, but don't worry. I'll probably do some more weathering to, to tone it down a bit anyway, but it does come out a lot brighter on camera, so it's not quite as, as bright as you think. Uh, uh, then last of all, I did the scum line with some uh, standard artist soil green, can't remember which particular green. Uh, just along the water line. Now, I didn't do a nice straight, like thin line because the, the the water around the side of the vessel 
is going to be moving all the time. So it's not going to be a, a solid scum line. It's just a hint of green where algae and stuff grows between the water and the metal. Also note how the rust doesn't really too much go below the water line. That's how it tends to work on ocean vessels. Um, above the water line, obviously, there's oxygen and there's water, so the metals can rust. Under the water line, there's no real oxygen supply, so it's, it's a lot less likely to have any kind of rust. You probably would have a bit, but I've not added any here. Um, so I've kept the, the rust. Not, again, not on a solid straight line. Um, because water isn't just flat, it's all over the place, it's a vague thing. Uh, and I like the way some of the lighter streaks have come out like here, you can see. They've come out quite nicely as just random streaks. Uh, I've been looking at reference pictures of U-boats and the streaking was kind of random. Uh, it's where the paint had corroded or fallen away or just got lighter because of, you know, weathering and leaching. So that's where we are so far. So back to the steady cam. Actually, not back to the steady cam. Uh, I forgot to show you the, uh, the the conning tower or the sail parts. Exactly the same procedure as the other ones. Um, gunk wash, then the weathering. Uh, didn't need too many black washes on these. It's just on the deck, really. So these have all been nicely weathered. Again, the rust looks a bit extreme, but it's not going to look that bad once it's finished. Um, as you can see on the lower half, uh, we have the same again. Deck was done the same way. Uh, in the real life U-boats, the deck was painted and covered with a black preservative, so that's the idea, is it's the black preservative, but it's been kind of worn away by foot traffic. Uh, more rust streaking. Um, chipping, all the chipping was taken off, so I hope this is in focus. That's all come out quite nicely. I've not painted the um, the masts yet, the, the periscopes and stuff. They'll be painted um, kind of a last thing before I do all the rigging, just because they need to be shiny and I need to have the last coat of matte varnish on before I paint those. And then the grey bits on the end, they'll be brush matte varnished. Uh, the decals for the Laughing Sawfish had an absolute nightmare with those. Let's put this so you can see it. Um, client originally wanted the black one. As you can see here, this is not the black one, this is the green one. Basically had a real nightmare. Uh, I got the decals, I won't say where I got them from because I don't want to denigrate somebody's product. But I got them from a certain place. Uh, I've used them before, no problems at all. Uh, but these ones seem to be a new kind of print. Instead of being like on paper and look like an Alps print, they're kind of thicker and shinier. And they look fine at first, but as soon as I put them on the surface and use Microset and Microsol, uh, as I normally would, they basically curled up either into a bubble or into a roll, and I couldn't get them to stick or go straight from that, and I had to abandon them. Um, so the choice was basically order some more, and I hope I can get them to work with just water, or use the decals I had from the last time I built this, which were the original paper, what looked like Alps printed ones. Uh, discussed it with the client. I explained that obviously it'd be a few weeks before I got the replacements, but I can go ahead and use the green and the blue ones that I had left over, and he was quite happy to go with the green ones. And they've come out pretty cool. They look quite dark anyway, so... Um, there's been this debate over the years as to what colour the Laughing Sawfish actually was, and on different boats it looked different. Some say it was green, some say it was black. Uh, there are some quotes apparently from somebody who used to paint this on the U-boats saying he used green, but it did vary, so historical accuracy to one side, it kind of varies. Blue seems to be the most unsure one that people have mentioned, but nobody's 100% sure. Um, as you can see, I've got lots of things left to paint inside. I've still got all the, the brass and white details to do on all the bits of equipment that go on the, uh, on the conning tower deck or sail. Um, it's not attached the screws yet. They'll be painted separately with the brass or bronze colour. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, also got all the rigging to do. So anyway, right, enough of this wibbly wobbly cam. Back Now back again, this time properly to the steady cam. Right, so as you can see, uh, that's where we're up to. Um, not sure when I'm going to get the next one posted up. Uh, quite a bit left to do, but I'm, as I said, I'm short for time, so I need to cram in this in at my free moments. Um, Probably when we come back, um, we'll have either put everything together and be ready to do the easy line, or we may have actually done the easy line and finished everything, I'm not sure. Uh, but as I've always said, these are just quick updates. They're not how-tos or um, guides. You're not going to see me doing anything, really. Uh, not too much. So that'll do it for this time. Um, stay tuned for the next one, and as always, stay tuned for more videos. I haven't done many videos lately, just because I've been so busy with other real-life stuff. I haven't had chance. So stay tuned for more. Uh, there will be more coming, uh, but as always, thank you very much for watching, uh, and adios amoebas! <laughs>